when you're insulin resistant, that is, you've got metabolic syndrome, pretty much every chemical in the body is not quite right. Some are up, some are down, few are actually at physiologically normal levels. Traditionally, the focus is on the big guns, sugar, insulin, and cholesterol. In this series, we take a look at some of the other players, who they are, what they're up to, and how they're part of the state of insulin resistance. In this video, we're not actually looking at a chemical. Instead, we're looking at your baroreceptors. Turns out, baroreceptor sensitivity is reduced when you've got metabolic syndrome, which in a nutshell means your heart is not able to roll with the punches quite as well as it should. What should happen is if the situation changes, let's say for example you have to stand up quickly, what you need and want your heart to do will change. Lying down is a walk in the park because there's no gravity, but standing up not so much. The blood goes rushing to your toes and if your circulation system is caught napping, you could feel a little woozy in the moment, but you don't, thanks to your baroreceptor reflex. Little pressure receptors keep tabs on the blood pressure. The drop is quickly noted, and a message is sent to the brainstem hinting at a looming crisis. The brainstem responds, instructing the blood vessels to narrow and the heart to beat a little faster. And the problem is solved. Of course, if your next move is to relax, then the reverse happens. The little pressure sensor notices that the pressure is a tad on the high side. It shoots a message to the brainstem reporting on the situation, and the brainstem makes the necessary adjustments. Blood vessels widen, and the heart rate slows. It's so quick, you never notice. But how quick it is ends up being a reflection of your metabolic status. If you are insulin resistant, the speed at which you make the adjustment is slower. Now, this is not really a big deal in the moment. You make the adjustment. But it is a sign that the system is off balance, specifically the balance between the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system is compromised. Since these nerves, collectively known as the autonomic nervous system, run your body behind the scenes, think automatic, it has complications for your health across the board. So reduced baroreceptor sensitivity is not ideal. The question is, why does it happen? Is it the cause or the consequence? Well, the short answer is, we really don't know. I suspect it's probably a little bit of both. High insulin, morning, noon, and night, is a big part of the problem. Watch this video to understand why insulin is at the root of the problem. So, if you want to improve your baroreceptor sensitivity, you do need to rein in insulin. For tips and strategies to help you do this, download the Willpower Report. It's free. But what about the sympathovagal balance? Well, it's more than just a major controller. It can be controlled by your lifestyle and behaviors. Now, the lifestyle habit that will bring you a lot of bang for your buck is physical activity. It's a case of practice makes perfect. People who move more need the system to be tuned in to avoid disasters. But this is the tip of the iceberg when it comes to manipulating your sympathovagal balance. Literally everything you do tips the balance one way or the other. So it's a lever you can pull. It's a matter of figuring out what works for you and then doing it. I'll be looking at some of the things you can do in an upcoming series. In the meantime, here are a few references I've used to tell the Barrow Receptor Sensitivity story. Subscribe to our channel to catch up on previous and upcoming episodes in this series, The Ups and Downs of Insulin Resistance. 
until next time.